Hi guys, Phil Radford here. Um, sorry I haven't been doing any tutorials for quite some time. I've been absolutely mad, stacked busy with my company, uh, Strangebox, which is doing really, really well. Um, but I found a bit of time today on Bank Holiday Monday of all days. Um, family's out, so I've got a bit of peace and quiet. So it's just time to geek out and try some things out. So I thought I'd share. So um, just going to show you how to make this today on a quick tutorial. Um, Hopefully you guys know a bit about Maya anyway, if not, you might struggle, but you could probably follow along, I'll try and explain as much as possible. Um, so, quite simply, you can use this uh, in motion graphics, or uh, it could be some kind of particle beam, um, it doesn't have to be on a letter, this could be a, a curve or path that's sort of whipping around a city, and I don't know, you could incorporate it into your motion graphics somehow. Um, and I'll just show you how to set it up because it's quite fun, it's got some nice damping to it um, it's got some fun rotation, it looks a bit crazy, you could set up quite a few letters doing this um, so yeah, so let's just crack on, I'm just going to start with a, a new scene I'm not going to save that um, we're just going to go and create the text first so we just go create text options, I think I'm going to use a J again, why not for Jedi, right so curves and let's hit apply and close, hit F to focus in on this and I'm just going to scale it up a little bit there is our curve obviously this curve could be anything, one of your curves uh, uh, that you've made yourself and logo, as I said a path, some kind of spiral whatever um, it doesn't even need to be on a path, you could just animate your uh, emitter around, attach it to a motion capture example anything you want So let's go to the end dynamics menu if you're not there already and we'll just go to end calls and we're going to go to create end calls create emitter so here is our emitter I'm just going to double check and make sure that play every frame is uh, switched on because we want to do that because if things start to get a little bit heavy um, computationally uh, then we want to be able to just kind of view it in real time without having to play bar blast or uh, cache everything so it's going to look a bit fast at first when things aren't so heavy. Okay, so I'm just going to increase my timeline size to about 500. And we're just going to play and see what we've got. Okie dokie, so we've got some very fast particles coming out. Uh, I'm going to go into the emitter and the attributes with Control A. Uh, if you're on a Mac, I'm, maybe that's Command A. Um, and I'm going to change this to a directional emitter and increase this to about 400. The rate. Okie dokie, spread, I think uh, about 50. And the speed, I'm going to ramp that right up to about 3. Okie dokie, so now I'm going to uh, just have a look what we got. <laughs> um, and I'm going to attach this emitter to the path and get that animating around it. So to do that, we need to jump down into the animation. Uh, window set and I'm going to go into the animate menu I'm going to go motion paths attached to motion path options and it's in here that you can set up your start and end time so you can either use a time slider of 500 or just uh, put in a value I'm going to just keep mine at 100 which at 25 frames a second is about 4 seconds uh, hit apply so let's just watch that whiz around the J okie dokie bit far still still looks like someone's urinating in here or a hose pipe um, so now we just need to add some different uh, well no we need to create the cube first don't we, we need to create our instance object that's going to be uh, buzzing around this so here we have a cube so let's just hit 5 so we can see what we're doing we've got a cube going to select the particle and we're going to go into back into the end dynamics menu set and we're going to go in particles instance uh, replacement you could go into the options and name it if you want but I am far too lazy for that so we're just going to hit apply and there we have our instance uh, doing all sorts of crazy things um, I usually use uh, leave the source cube visible for now in case I want to scale it up and down uh, which will translate onto these just to show you that um, and we can hide it later on so there we go, so now I believe we need to go into the particle attributes and uh, start adding some attributes let's just rewind that and go into particle shape alright so as you can see uh, earlier on 
when I uh, first liked the video, you could see that we had um, the particles were um, colliding. So we're just going to turn on self collide and see what happens there. And everything's going crazy. What we can see is that all of the cubes are constantly facing the other direction. So that's something we need to address now. Um, we need to compute the rotation. Um, so within the rotation drop down box there's compute rotation we'll just click in there and if you notice that when I click in there nothing's going to happen nothing changes because we need to go down into general settings, settings and change something in there so here's the general options you want to go into rotation options and in rotation not rotate type rotation we need to change it to rotation pp per particle and if we rewind now we can see that yeah much more messy and they're going all over the shop perfect that's exactly what we want okay so we can tell that obviously these particles are being heavily affected by the nucleus gravity so we can either go and uh, dial down the gravity within the nucleus solver itself or we can just uh, go up to the options and tell it to ignore the solver gravity so we'll do that for now and we can see that Things are sort of spinning off everywhere, it's still looking a bit crazy. Uh, I'm going to introduce some drag into the particle itself, um, just so that it just kind of holds back a bit. Uh, let's just ram that up to about 100. Yeah, that's what I want to see, they start to stop, which is good. So I'm not going to mess with the damp at all. What I am going to look at is the uh, collision width. Um, in the collision section I'm going to turn on the collision thickness and uh, this is something that can kind of trick you out when you're creating these simulations. Uh, you always check your collision thickness if you've got self collide switched on on your particles because um, the whip scale may be too much so you can see that the whip scale was greater than our object okay so just turn that off again and if we rewind there we go we've got a different type of collision going on now uh, I'm just going to go because we've got like look at some of that rotation that's going on these bonkers isn't it they're just, just flying around like mad um, so we've got some rotation damp we can play around with uh, under here, which is what we want. Let's just pull it up a bit. There we go, so they're rotating very fast as they come out of the emitter. And you can see they damp down as the emitter goes off. Maybe it's too much. Yeah, that's kind of cool. So I think now I might just play around with the size of my cube a bit. Yep. And remember, this is quite important, that when you scale up and down your source cube of the instance, it's not going to automatically translate that attribute to um, the uh, collision thickness. As you can see, if we open up the collision thickness now, it's thicker than the cube itself so we'll just scale this down to where it should be switch this off and there we go cool I mean I kinda like that it's kinda fun um, we could translate this to um, some kind of measure within in, uh, the end particle attributes and create some sort of blood or liquid simulation from it um, but what I'm really trying to show you is that Maya is a, uh, a very strong uh, 3D tool to be used within motion graphics. So I've been using it within motion graphics for about eight years. I know that people these days tend to use and learn Cinema 4D along with their design skills and After Effects. I don't and I get a lot of work and Maya is more than capable of doing all sorts of craziness that is controllable. Um, so if a client asks you to do something, it's not like, you know, uh, with Cinema 4D, from what I've seen, is there are a lot of sort of preset animations, you can do crazy stuff and this and that, but if, if a client comes to you uh, and he wants to direct it, and he wants something specific happening, 
uh, to these cubes and, and uh, how he wants it to move and how he wants it to change exactly, then I find that Maya is the best solution for that because it's so controllable. Um, and if you can't control it within the interface, then you can go and script it or get a scripter in and it's, you know, Maya rules. Um, so yeah, there we go. I hope you enjoyed that. It was really quick. Um, you know, do with it what you wish. What we could do, let's just do it. Let's just... Um, See, I was going to go then, but you get an extra, extra time for your buck. Not that you've paid any bucks, and not that I've earned any bucks apart from a little bit from Google, which uh, isn't much to talk about. But we'll just stick on um, shader. So let's just get into rendering and choose a lambier. Uh, we'll just change that to yellow. There we go, a bit of yellow in there. Um, Render it. I use V-Ray. Turn some GI on. Let's create a light. Let's just create a dome light. Let's just make that invisible. Um, yeah, let's render it. See what it comes out like. Oh, there's an earlier render I did with some particles in it as well. Yeah, pretty sweet. Get some nice soft shading in there and stuff. And what we can do now, if we wanted to, is to grab another um, <coughs> another emitter, and we could uh, attach that to the motion path. And that second emitter could be emitting a different shape. Uh, it could also be emitting just some particles to mix in with it um, to really add some sort of depth and thickness. Um, all sorts, letters, numbers, whatever. Anyway. There you go, hope that's given you something to think about and uh, maybe try it out. As always, leave a comment, like, subscribe, uh, and I try to help anyone I can. So if you've got a problem, I'll even take a scene from you, um, see if we can't fix it. Okay, take care, thanks a lot, see ya.